In this video, we're gonna look at the seven ways to secure your Windows computer. Now, the advice I'm gonna give in this video is applicable if you're a home user or a business user. And the advice is really easy to implement. So you're not gonna need someone with technical knowledge to implement these strategies for you. But before we start, a quick introduction. My name is Jonathan Edwards, and I'm a business IT consultant from Yorkshire in the UK. We help our clients with their IT support and the cyber security. We all know that cyber crime is one of the big threats today. But did you know that cyber criminals, they pick on the weak, they pick on the vulnerable people. And when I talk about vulnerable people, I mean people who have poor security in place. The good news is if you have some basic cyber security in place, you've got a less chance of getting hacked. So in this video, I'm gonna show you seven great security tips that you can implement to secure your Windows computer. What's more, if you're a business in the UK, these security tips will help you with your cyber essentials accreditation. Now, just one word of warning. In this video, I'm not gonna cover any security tips for Apple Mac computers. I will be doing that, but it will be in a video in a few weeks time. So without further ado, let's get started. The first security tip is to remove any bloatware or software from a computer that you don't use or you don't need. So what is bloatware? Well, when you buy a new computer for the first time, it will come pre-installed with lots of different software. Now, a lot of that software you just won't use, you won't need. It's there to try and make money for providers. So sometimes you might have a Netflix app installed on the computer because essentially they want you to sign up for Netflix, but you might not need this. Now, the problem with bloatware, if it sits on your computer and it's not used and it's not maintained, it's not updated, then that software can quite quickly become a bit of a security hazard. So when it comes to bloatware, what are the tips you can use to uninstall it? Well, firstly, let's have a look at my computer screen. So I've got a Windows 11 computer. If I right click here and go to settings, now I can go to apps and apps and features. And this will show me all the applications that are installed on this computer. So what I can do and work down the list, I can look at things and think, well, I don't use that, I don't need that, and I can simply go to here and uninstall. So I, looking down this list here, there's nothing that I don't need on this computer. And a word of warning as well, be careful, because a lot of these applications installed here are really important to the functionality of the computer. So when you're looking down this list, you're looking at something that might jump out that you just don't need. Things like the LinkedIn app, you might have Netflix, you might have games installed on there. If there's something that jumps out that doesn't look like it's to do with the function of the computer, then just simply uninstall it. Now, another tip I can give you, if the computer is brand new, if you've just switched it on for the first time, I would reset it. So before you put any of your applications on there, before you move any of your data on there, simply reset the PC and hopefully it will get rid of all this bloatware applications. So to do that, you simply, again, in the app section here, you go up to system, you go down to recovery, and you simply click on reset this PC and you go through that reset and hopefully then Windows will reinstall without any of the bloatware applications. So this takes us nicely on to tip number two and that is software updates. You've got to keep all of your software up to date. Now, software is everywhere. So we've got software on our computer, we're talking about Windows, we're talking about Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Outlook, Google Chrome, Firefox, Software is all over our computer. But software is everywhere else as well. Software is used to fly airplanes, run hospitals, run cars. We are surrounded by software. But the nature of software is it has bugs and it has security flaws sometimes that the software developers find. So what they do when they find a bug or they find a security issue is to release something called a patch. Now a patch is meant to fix that problem for you. So if you've got a piece of software that's never updated, it will never get the new patches. It will never get the new fixes and the new fixes for the security issues. And if it's left like that, it can become a risk and it can increase the chances of you suffering from a cyber attack. So what needs updating on your computer? Well, the answer is everything. So firstly, again, if we go into settings, 
settings is our friend and we go down to Windows Update. Now you need to make sure that all your updates are always installed. So you can check for updates there and I can see on this computer there's an update waiting so I can download and install that update. But with Windows 10 and Windows 11 updates are forced upon you so it will install automatically but I sometimes just come in here see if there's any updates and download and install it promptly. So that is Windows, but you've also got other bits of software. Now, thankfully, software is kept updated automatically these days because it's, it's so important. But you've got things like Google Chrome. So we can open Google Chrome. We can go to here. We can go to Help. We can go to About Google Chrome. And this tells us as well that Google Chrome is up to date. It's the latest version of Google Chrome. So any application that you use, it could be Adobe Reader, it could be Google Chrome, Firefox, any application that you use, make sure that it's always running the latest software. So my third tip to keeping your Windows computer secure is to use a non-administrator account for my daily use. So what's an administrator account? Well, if I'm using an admin account for my daily use, it means I've got full access to the computer. I can install applications, I can uninstall applications, and I can change any setting on the computer that I want. Now, the problem with this is if my computer gets hacked or something like that, some malicious software is installed, it means that that software or that hacker also has full access to the computer and they can do maximum damage. If I'm just using a standard account where I can't uninstall applications or anything like that or change settings, then if I get some malicious software on there, that also can't do as much damage. So it is reducing the damage that a malicious hacker could do. So how would I create an admin account and how would I configure my PC for a standard account? Well, I go to here, I go to settings again, I will go to accounts and you can see here I've been a little bit naughty already. So my name's there. I'm using an administrator account. So what would I do? What would I change and how would I set up my computer? Well, first I go to other users and I create myself something called a local admin. So I'd go to here and I click add account. I click on here. I will click on here because I want to create just a local account. So I call this Jonathan Admin. I put a password in here and I just answer these security questions. So I will just put anything in here for now. This isn't true, but I'll put these settings in and I click on next. And that creates me a local, well, it creates me an account called Jonathan Admin, but it's just, it's not an administrator yet. So I come in here and I've changed the account type and I've changed that to be an administrator account. So now I've got an administrator account called Jonathan Admin. I could then click on here and because I'm logged on, it won't let me change the account type. But what I would do, I would simply click on here, change account type and just change that to a standard account. So that would mean that the account that I was using would be standard. It wouldn't let me install software or anything like that. So what would happen if I needed to install software or needed to change some settings? Well, I'd simply log off the computer, I'd log on with my new admin account, and I'd only use the admin account when I wanted to do admin style activities. So it just provides that little bit of extra security. So my fourth tip to securing your Windows computer is to always use strong passwords. So my previous tip, we were talking about standard accounts and admin accounts. Make sure for your standard account, your password is at least eight characters and try and make it complex if you can. For the admin account, I'd take it a little step further. I'd make sure it was at least 12 characters and again, make it complex. If you want some help managing passwords, creating passwords, managing your kind of cyber security when it comes to credentials, I highly recommend a tool like Keeper Security. So Keeper Security is a password manager. I've got lots of videos on my YouTube channel about that. It becomes your password brain. I use it, it is really, really helpful. There'll be a link below this video on how you can sign up for a trial. 
Now my next tip for securing your Windows computer is to block any files from running from your downloads folder. So what does that mean? If you download a file to your computer from the internet or anywhere else, it goes into here, which is your downloads folder. Now the problem is a lot of malicious files are designed to run automatically from the downloads folder. So if we can block any type of file from running from the downloads folder, it provides us with that little bit of extra protection. So for example, I've got a PDF here. I can click on there and it just launches, it opens up. So what we can use is a little tool, a little free download called Ask Admin. And again, I'll put a link below the video. Now you just download Ask Admin, which I've done already. You can see it's here. And again, it's downloaded to my downloads folder. So what I would first do, I would copy it. This is an important step. And I'll put it in my documents folder. So I'll paste it into there. And then what I'll do is I'll right click and I'll click extract. Extract it. And then here we go. So I'll double click on there and I'll launch the software. Now it's going to give us that message and run anyway. Click on yes. Now this is the ask admin. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add the folder download. So I'll click on here and I'm going to add that into there like that. So what I've done now, I'm telling ask admin to block anything from running from the downloads folder. So now what happens when I try and run that file again? So I'll go into my downloads folder, the same PDF, click on there, open it. No, I can't run it, so it's blocked from running. So what would I do to, to open this file? Well, it's simple, it's an extra step, but I would simply copy it, I put it into my documents folder, and then I would launch it from there and that opens. So again, I know it's an extra step, but it's incredibly important to block the downloads from running from your downloads folder. My next tip to secure your Windows computer is to make sure that you've got really good malware protection installed. Now you do get some free malware protection built into Windows and I'll show you that. Go on to settings, go on to privacy and security, go to Windows security, and we can open this and it will open the Windows Security tab. So this is built into Windows and it's free. So when it comes to malware protection, what are we looking out for? Well, firstly, you've got to make sure that it updates daily. So what I mean by updates, I want my Windows Security, my Windows Defender to go off to Microsoft at least once a day and download the new security fixes, the new definitions to make sure that my computer is protected against the latest threats. So on this screen here, you can see the virus and threat protection updates last updated today at 10.56. So it last updated two hours ago. So that's really important to all Cyber Essentials. So that is what Windows Defender is doing. We can also make sure that it scans daily as well. So we can look at here. This hasn't scanned for a while. So then I can click on quick scan and that'll scan my computer. So that is Windows Defender. Now Windows Defender also has another security feature here called reputation based protection. So we can look here and we can see something called Smart Screen from Microsoft Edge. So what this will do, Smart Screen, if you're using Microsoft Edge, if you go to a website that is deemed as being malicious, Smart Screen will block it. So you've got to make sure that that is switched on. So to summarize the malware protection, make sure that it updates daily, make sure that you're doing scans regular on your computer, and make sure that there's something built in that scans websites when you launch them for malicious files and things like that. And to be honest, when we're talking about Windows Defender, it's free, it's built into Windows. I recommend that you use a paid one. So again, what would I recommend? If you open here, I've got a few things here. I would recommend two products, Sophos Intercept X Advanced. This is a paid product, but it's highly recommended. And also Heimdall, both very good products. Links below the video if you want to go ahead and purchase or take a trial for either of those. Now my final tip on how to secure your Windows computer is to make sure that BitLocker is enabled. So again, what is BitLocker? Well, BitLocker again is free and it's built into Windows. And what BitLocker does, it encrypts your computer hard drive. Why is this important? So if my computer gets stolen and someone takes the hard drive to try and get the data off it, if BitLocker is enabled, 
they won't be able to read any of the data because it's encrypted. Now, this is especially useful for laptops because obviously they're portable devices. So if my laptop gets lost or stolen, someone takes the hard drive out, someone's trying to read the data. If BitLocker is enabled, then they can't do that. So how do you enable BitLocker? We'll go to the computer again. Just type in the search here, BitLocker, and manage BitLocker. And here we go. So you can see that BitLocker is not turned on on this computer. So what I would simply do is I would turn BitLocker on. It'll do a little check. Now it's going to ask me where I want to save my BitLocker recovery key. Very important because if there's ever any problems, it will ask you for your BitLocker recovery key. And if you don't have it, unfortunately, your hard drive will stay encrypted and you won't be able to get your data. So you don't want to get locked out of your own computer. So you've got a few options there. You can print it, you can save it to a file, or you can save it to your Azure AD account. Once you click on next, it will then start encrypting your computer hard drive. That might take a while, depending on how big the hard drive is and how much data you have on it. So there you go. There are my seven tips to secure your Windows computer. I hope you found them useful. Please implement them. It will improve your cybersecurity posture. I look forward to seeing you again soon.